Okay, again, this is the part three of this week's session, and we will be talking about tissues. All right. So these are the intended learning objectives for this session. You have will be discussing the distinct and uh, the distinguishing characteristic of each of the following tissues. You have four fundamental types. You have the epithelial, the connective tissue, muscular tissue, and the nervous tissue. And at the end of this discussion, we will be discussing tissue repair and homeostasis as well. All right. So when we say epithelial tissue. No? Before we go now to the epithelial tissue, there are four fundamental types. So if I ask you which of the following fundamental types of tissue is this one or that one, you will have to choose only four. These are the epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous tissue. And we will be discussing this intensively one by one. Okay, Let's first discuss the epithelial tissue. Now, this is actually a diverse group that includes the surface and the glands. So when we are talking about surface, we are talking about epithelium or epithelial tissue. When we are talking about glandular or solid organs, we are also talking about epithelial tissue as well. Okay, As per definition, as its name suggests, it is a covering and lining epithelium forms the outer covering of the skin and also the outer covering of some internal organs. It also lines body cavities, blood vessels, uh, ducts, and interiors of the respiratory system, digestive, urinary, and some reproductive system organs. Okay? The cells of this epithelial tissue have an apical surface and which is exposed to the body cavity. Uh, some lateral surfaces as well, they face cells on either side, and the basal surface is what we found in the deep layer of the skin or of the deep layer of that organ. Okay, this is a schematic diagram of a epithelial tissue. If you notice, as mentioned, they are in the lining, lining the, the organ. So this is an example of a lining epithelium. Sorry, yeah, lining epithelium. Yeah. So when we talk about tissue, it is made up of cells, right? So uh, this picture will define tissue. This is a cell, okay? So anong, anong shape yan? Mamaya pag-uusapan natin yung mga shapes ng cells. But this is actually an example of a cuboidal, parang cube. No? This is one cuboidal cell, two cuboidal cells, Three cuboidal cells, four cuboidal cells, five, six, seven cuboidal cells. So, pag pinagsama-sama yan, it are tissue, right? Now, to be specific, if it lines in the cavity or an organ, it is called an epithelial tissue. Now, also another, you will be able to identify what type of uh, lining epithelium it is. So, if this is a cuboidal in shape or cuboid, they are cuboidal. But how many layers of these cells are found in this layer? So, isa siyang straight line. So, ibig sabihin, one layer lang. So, by definition, if it is one layer, it is called simple. So, pag sinabi kong, what is the lining epithelium of this organ? And you found it, or you found out that this is the exact picture in the practical exam. Ay, one layer of cuboidal cells is... Simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay? Simple dahil one layer. Cuboidal dahil cuboidal ang shape ng cells niya. So, that is one function of the epithelial tissue. Another is this epithelial tissue. No? Yan. So, in this area, it is actually a glandular in form. No? Meron niyang, meron niyang um, lalabas na secretion. Which is a um, a, yeah, secretion, either a mucus or serous. So this will be, um, uh, we will be talking, talking about that in a little while. So this is just an overview of the epithelial tissue. Okay, by definition, what are its function of the epithelial tissue? It, it protects, so it, is, it serves as a barrier or also it is exchanged between compartments that is found in the tissue. They are for secretion, as mentioned, by glandular products. It's, it could be serous, a mucus, no? 
or a serum mucus or, or a combination. And also for absorption, this is very much um, common in the small intestine because as we all know, small intestine is an organ for reabsorption. Reabsorb, reabsorb, reabsorbing what we uh with what we ate or what we drink, and then it will go to the circulation, blood circulation. So all absorption happen in the small intestine. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about. What are the different cell shapes now found in the epithelial tissue? If we are talking about thin. Uh, it allows rapid passage of substances through them. So, pag manipis, it is actually squamous cells or flat cells. When we are talking about tall, but they are wide and they are shaped like cubes or hexagons, we are talking about cuboidal cells or cube or cuboidal cells. They may have microvilli at the apical surface and function in either secretion or absorption. Actually, the cuboidal cells, <clears throat> the cuboidal cells, they can be found uh, in the different organs. Later, I will tell you. I will tell you what are those organs that are uh, cuboidal in shape. Okay, next is the columnar cells. If the cuboidal cells looks like cubes, um, and tall, pero yung wide, wide niya, chayo height niya is the same. Yung columnar cells they are much taller that they are white. You know, they are like columns. Kaya columnar cells siya and they protect underlying tissue. They are often are specialized for secretion and absorption as well. But uh, in this cuboidal, between cuboidal cells and columnar cells, as mentioned in the small intestine, more of absorption, right? But uh, between cuboidal and columnar cells, the columnar cells are more for absorption and secretion. Okay. Okay. So after identifying if it is flat or squamous, if it is cube-like or cuboid or pahaba na cuboidal, you'll have to determine if how many layers are there in that lining epithelium. Now, these are the types of epithelial cells. So if it is simple class, one layer lang yan. One layer of identical cell. If you notice in the uh picture that I've shown to you, one layer lang of cuboidal cells, they are called their simple. Next is stratified. So, uh, when we say stratified, they are come in layers. Okay? There are two or more layers of identical cells. So, they are called stratified. So, if you notice in the skin, for example, um, flat cells ang skin. Okay? Pero marami siyang layer. So, Pag flat, it's squamous. If it has two or more layers, it's stratified. So, the lining epithelium of the skin is stratified squamous. Okay? Uh, okay, that's it. Transitional epithelium, it actually has its unique characteristic of changing from, from squamous to, cub to cuboidal or to columnar and then squamous again. But this time, the transitional epithelium is also known as your uroepithelium. Okay? U R O epithelium. Why doc? Kasi in the urinary bladder, no? Uh, as we all know, the urinary bladder is part of the urinary system where it catches all the urine for temporary storage, right? But if the urinary if the urinary bladder empties, ibig sabihin pag-iihi ka na from the cuboidal epithelium, it will go back again to flat cells. At if ever, for example, this, this the, the urinary bladder, at walang laman niya, that's flat. Okay? But if it is, if it fills up again with urine, lalaki yung urinary bladder mo, no? Uh, sorry, kapag, kapag empty ang bladder, cuboidal ang shape ng lining epithelium niya sa loob. Kapag nasa-stretch ang urinary bladder dahil meron ng urine na nag-fill up doon, nagiging flat cells na siya. So, ibig sabihin, it transitions from cuboidal to lumbar to uh, simple squamous or squamous epithelium. That's why there is no specific lining epithelium for the urinary bladder. It is acceptable 
that we answer if you if you will be asked what's the lining epithelium of the urinary bladder it is transitional okay it transitions from one shape to another shape depends on its function okay yeah so this is what i'm talking about kapag pinagsama na natin if it is simple squamous or simple cuboidal now simple squamous this is what it looks like it has a one layer or a single layer of flat cells. Usually, it can be found in heart, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, uh, lung alveoli, no one layer of flat cells. If it is simple cuboidal, meaning one layer of cuboidal cells or cube-shaped cells, they are for secretion, absorption, and excretion. So this one is one cuboidal cell. One cuboidal cell, etc. And then if it is uh, if it only has one layer, it is simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay, this is usually found in the kidneys. Okay, what about simple columnar? Uh, simple columnar, it has a rectangular shaped cells that is found all throughout the alimentary tract. Doc, what is alimentary tract? This is known as your gastrointestinal tract or GI tract. A GI tract or gastrointestinal tract. From the uh, stomach pa lang, simple columnar na, to down to your small intestine, down to your large intestine, they're all simple columnar epithelium. That's why their function is mainly for absorption and secretion. Okay? Look, take a look at the picture on your lower left. This is not exactly like this one, the, cube, the cuboidal. Look at the simple columnar. They are in columns. No? They are taller than they are wider. Okay, They are your simple columnar. They are in columns. Now, what about simple ciliated epithelium? They have uh, white hair-like processes known as your cilia. And this cilia, if you notice, this one, the hair-like structure, they are... Um, uh, processes, no? Uh, the main function is for just for movement, and this is uh usually found in the trachea and in some, in, in in the respiratory tract, no? To drop air to allow passages of air from outside to inside of the lungs. Okay, what do you mean again by stratified? It has two or more layers. Compared to your simple, which is which will contain only one layer, your stratified epithelium contains two or more layers, right? As mentioned a while ago, um, in the skin, okay, uh, they're usually keratinized. But when you say stratified epithelium, you have to categorize first if it is keratinized or non-keratinized. This only applies for stratified epithelium. Now, look at this picture class. Now, that picture uh, would tell us that, yes, look, it is exactly has small, uh, sorry, flat cell like this, and it has so many layers. So, uh, two or more layers of a flat or squamous cell is stratified, yes, but look, take a look if Take a look if it is dry surfaces or wet surfaces. Okay. Why, Doc? Because in the lining epithelium, we'll have to mention if it is keratinized or non-keratinized. Okay. What is the difference between keratinized and non-keratinized? First is the location. They are usually found in the skin, hair, and nails kapag keratinized. Kaya, kaya keratinized kasi may keratin sa skin. Okay. Wear and tear, and usually found in the dry surfaces. While in the non-keratinized, they're usually found in the wet surfaces, lining of the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, vagina, they are all non-keratinized. So they're called stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. So please take note of the example and characteristic of a non-keratinized versus the keratinized one. Okay. They're all found in the stratified epithelium. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Canina is a urinary system or urinary bladder. There is transition. That's why it is called transitional epithelium. Okay, pear-shaped cell, urinary system, they stretches as the urine passes. That's why there is transition between two cell shapes. 
That's why it called that. That's why it's called transition. Okay. Yeah. This is just a review of the uh, picture of your arrangement of layers. Simple. So those stratified, they're stratified. Okay. So there is another term here. It says here pseudo stratified. Yeah. Doc, ano ibig sabihin ng pseudo? It is it has false stratified stratification. So it has a false stratification, hindi po talaga siya uh, many layers, nagkataon lang yung nucleus niya, is hindi pantay-pantay. Okay? But in reality, it is all, it only has um, one layer. Okay? So that in that one layer, uh, one layer lang po talaga siya ng columnar cell, but the nucleus is not pantay-pantay. Um, uh, they are not in the same position of the nucleus. That's why you will be mistaking this as a multiple layers where it's isang layer lang po siya. That's why it's called pseudo-stratified. This is usually found in the trachea or in the respiratory tract, pseudo-stratified columnar cells. Okay. Next of the function of the epithelial tissue, they serve as a gland. Right? They are glandular. So when you say gland, it may consist of one cell or a group of highly specialized epithelial cells that secrete substances into ducts or onto the surface or into the blood. No? Mm -hmm. That all glands of the body are classified either endocrine or exocrine. Okay, let me introduce to you to these terms. Endocrine glands and exocrine glands. So the endocrine glands enter the interstitial fluid and then eventually they will diffuse into the bloodstream. The secretions are called hormones, as you all know, and that will comprise our endocrine system. Okay, What about exocrine duct, exocrine glands? They secrete their products into ducts. Okay? So meron silang ducts. Ang endocrine naman, they, are called, they have ductless. Okay? Wala silang ducts. Directly sila pupunta sa blood. Where in the exocrine glands, they produce, they secrete their products via a duct that empty into the surface of a covering or lining epithelium or a lumen of a hollow organ. So meron siyang duct. The secretions of the exocrine glands include the mucus, the oil, the earwax, milk sometimes, saliva, and digestive enzymes. So meaning, um, it could be any of these secretions, but dadaan sila sa duct. Okay? If it, if it has duct, it is called exocrine glands. Okay. So this is taken from this uh, table 4.2, the glandular epithelium. As you all know, endocrine glands, they produce or they secrete hormones. No? Function of which is, is it produces hormones that regulate various body activities. This is your thyroid gland. Okay? Your thyroid gland is actually an endocrine gland which produces thyroid hormones. Next, exocrine. Yeah. Doc, sabi mo pag exocrine by doc. Of course, the, the secretory products, they will be released into what we call your ducts. Okay? Location of this exocrine gland, as mentioned, uh, it could be sweat, oil, or earwax, digestive glands. Or is uh ang, ang common dito is the salivary glands, no? So ibig sabihin saliva ang lalabas sa duct na yan. They will be secreted into the mouth cavity or sometimes uh pancreas din. No pancreas it releases its secretion through its pancreatic duct. Ta? Yeah. Okay, so that is the first fundamental type of tissue. Let's go now to the second fundamental type of tissue which is your connective tissue. Now, one of the most abundant and widely distributed tissue in the, in, in the human body is the connective tissue. And it has two basic cells or two basic elements, the connective tissue cells and the extracellular matrix. That is, the, these two basic elements na hindi yun dapat makalimutan when, it is, when we are talking about connective tissue. It has two basic elements. It's connective tissue cells and it's matrix. When we say extracellular matrix, this is the material between its widely spaced cells and it is consists actually of a protein. 
So, these are your connective tissue fibers. So, mayroon ka ng cells, mayroon ka ng fibers, and that extracellular matrix is also composed of a ground substance. Okay? Alright. So, what are the functions of connective tissue? Napakadami. No? It, it supports the entire tissue. It provides general structure. As flashed in the screen, it provides mechanical strength, space, feeling, physical and metabolic support, protection, transport, and insulation. Insulation in this connective tissue is, it is in the form of an adipose tissue or fat tissue, and it is a good insulator. Uh, those are their fat tissue. Uh, good insulation. All right. So as mentioned, let's talk about the connective tissue cells. First are your fibroblasts, okay? They are large, flat cells with branching processes as seen in the right side of the screen. They are present in several connective tissues and usually they are the most numerous. Fibroblast class are the uh, main or the uh, characteristic cells of your connective tissue. Please take note of that, okay? They are the characteristic cells of the connective tissue. These are your fibroblasts. Your adipocytes are also known as your fat cells. Now, this is a perfect example or good example of your adipose tissue or adipose cells. Uh, this is one adipose tissue, uh, cell, another adipose cell. So, pag pinagsama-sama mo sila, ano tawag? Adipose tissue. Now, Doc, ang cute naman ito. No? Uh, walang laman. Hindi yan walang laman. No, take a look at this specific adipose tissue. Ito po. Yan. This adipose tissue, meron po yung flat globules sa gitna. Okay? The fat globules kasi, uh, if, we, if, if this is a slide no, that, that you will be looking into microscope na nagkailangan ng stain para makita natin, there are flat fat globules that are found in this X area. But because of its uh, staining property, hindi na sustain ang fats. So what will happen is that the nucleus will be pushed towards the periphery. Ito po ang nucleus ng adipose cell or fat cell. So this adipocyte, no, the, the nucleus is found at the periphery of the cell kaya magig mukha siyang ring. And we call that as signet ring. S-I-G-N-E-T. Yan. So this nucleus is pushed towards the periphery because of the presence of fat here that is not seen because of its staining property. And it, this is the typical adipocyte. It is the typical signet. It has signet ring in appearance. I signet ring. Okay, what else? Another connective tissue cell is our macrophages. There are phagocytes that develop from monocyte, which is a type of white blood cell. So macrophage are phagocyte. Phagocytes, ito po yung nag engulf ng mga foreign body, uh, uh, parasite, virus, etc. that is uh, to control the infection. Mast cells, okay? Mast cells are involved in the inflammatory response and also kill bacteria. Take note also this, that these mast cells are also involved in hypersensitivity reaction. For example, allergic reaction, um, allergies, what else? Um, yun, yung mga, pag nagkaroon ka ng allergies to egg, for example, or chicken, tapos nagkaroon ka ng rashes, the, the, the cells responsible for that are your mast cells. Okay. Plasma cells are an important part of the body's immune response. If you've heard of the term antibodies, your IgA, IgM, IgD, no, etc. These are all your plasma cells. No, they're responsible for the production of those antibodies are your plasma cells. Look at this picture of your plasma cells, class. No? Ang cute. Ito po. Yeah. These are Spokes wheel appearance or uh, cartwheel appearance. Yan ang yan, uh, characteristic feature or appearance ng plasma cell. 
spokewheel or cartwheel appearance. Okay, we're done with the cells. Let's go now to the connective tissue fibers. As we all know, fibers in the connective tissue will be will strengthen and support its whole connective tissue. The first is the collagen fibers. Uh, that's the most abundant. Uh, yeah, that, that's the most abundant fiber in the connective tissue. They are very strong. They resist the pulling forces, but they are not stiff, which promotes also tissue flexibility. That's the collagen fibers. Uh, major fiber in the connective tissue. Next is elastic fibers. Elastic fibers are smaller in diameter compared to collagen. They join together to form a network within a tissue. And that elastic fibers, there is, uh, they, it consists of the molecule protein called elastin, surrounded by a glycoprotein called fibrillin. And they are actually strong and can be stretched up to one and a half times their relaxed length without breaking. Kasi nga, elastic sila. Because of the protein elastin, they are called your elastic fibers. Okay, last is your reticular fibers. They are consist of collagen and coating of a glycoprotein. Now, the these reticular fibers are very much common in the walls of blood vessels. And around skeletal muscles, smooth muscle fibers, they provide strength and support as well. So basically, when, when we say connective tissue in general, they provide strength and support. Okay? Yeah, so I mentioned this a while ago. If we are talking about ground substance, we are referring to connective tissue. This is a component of a connective tissue in between the cells and the fiber. Now, this ground substance will serve as a medium through which substances are exchanged between blood and cells. So they also uh, they are responsible also to support its connective tissue cells. They bind them together. Uh, and provide them a medium. So these are your ground substances, very much characteristic of a connective tissue. Now, there are classification of connective tissue. Now, we have to take note of this. First is loose connective tissue, L-O-O-S-E. Uh, as the name implies, it, it is loosely arranged among the many cells. And there are types of loose connective tissue. We have the areolar, adipose tissue or the fat tissue and the reticular tissue. These are all loose connective tissue. Okay. For the dense connective tissue, it has two types, dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue. It contains more numerous, thicker and denser fibers, called, uh, fewer cells than loose, pero two types tang to. Sorry. There are two types, dense regular and dense irregular regular connective tissue. Okay, some, some connective tissue, you can also uh, be of a fibrous tissue, elastic tissue. Blood is actually a connective tissue. A lymphoid, a lymphatic system, bone, cartilage, and adipose, they're all uh, uh, connective tissue components. Okay, that ends the connective tissue. Third of the fundamental type is your muscle tissue or muscular tissue. They are uh, the muscle tissue are elongated cells called the muscle fibers that are highly specialized to generate force. Uh, without the muscle, without the muscular tissue, you cannot move. So it produces motion, it maintains posture, and it generates heat. And the muscular tissue is classified into three. Now, please take note of these three classification of muscle. First is the skeletal muscle. Um, skeletal muscle tissue is named for its location. It is usually attached to the bones of the skeleton. The cardiac muscle tissue forms the bulk of the wall of the heart, while the smooth muscle is located in the hollow internal structure, such as the blood vessels, airways, Stomach, intestine, gallbladder, and the urinary bladder. They're all found there. These are the smooth muscles, and you will find that in those organs. Okay. Now let's describe each of the, of the muscle. Skeletal muscle, they are large, elongated, multinucleated cells 
the term the term here the key term there is multinucleated it has a multiple peripherally situated nucleus so ang nucleus nila is nasa side they are voluntary they are arranged in fascicles with endomysium, perimysium, and epimysium. At this point, no need to differentiate those three. But all you need to remember is that they are arranged in fascicles. This will be talked about next school year no? under histology. They have cross striations due to these myofibrils found in the muscle, and they are responsible for the sliding filament of mechanism of construction. That is your actin and myosin contractile unit. Okay, cardiac muscle is your uh, muscle found in your heart. And best way to memorize this is that, I give you clue, they are um, this cardiac muscle it has characteristic appear, has characteristic feature of intercalated disc. Okay? But my intercalated disc, automatic, they are cardiac muscle. So, uh, they have a single centrally located nucleus. They are binucleated. If your skeletal muscle is voluntary, your cardiac muscle is involuntary muscle. Branching ends. They're also with cross creations due to the myofibrils and also with sliding filament mechanism of construction, the actin and myosin. So basically, all you need to remember the cardiac muscle is that they have intercalated discs. And lastly is the smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, uh, these cells are small and they have they are in fusiform shape. They have also single central central nucleus. They are involuntary, just like the cardiac muscle. They have no striations. The cells shorten and broaden on contraction. So the smooth muscle, example of which are your uh, found in the um, blood vessels found in the intestine, stomach, etc. Okay, that ends the basic types of muscle, the muscular tissue. And the last of the fundamental type of tissue is your nervous tissue. Okay, as you all know, nervous tissue, nervous system provides rapid and precise communication between different parts of the body. And the action of a specialized nerve cell and this is the characteristic cell of the nervous tissue. We call this one as neurons. Now, they are excitable cells. They're interconnected to each other. And what about the non-excitable cells? They are known as your supporting cells. So, ibig sabihin, in the nervous tissue, neurons are the bida. And the supporting cells are not the contrabida, but the best friend of the bida. So, uh, between this uh, cell, uh, neurons, and supporting cells, the one that is excitable cells are your neurons. Okay, Functions of the nervous tissue is to gather and process information as well as it generates appropriate response signals. Now, this is an example of a neuron. Now, they are star-shaped or stellate in shape. Yeah, star. Na mayroon mga axons and dendrites or mga processes. This is the nucleus. And if you look closely, there is also a nucleolus. So, sabi ng mga books, the nucleolus is very prominent. That's why it is known as your fish eye nucleus. Yan makita sa neurons or sa nerve cell. Fish eye nucleolus. And the nervous tissue has two main parts. You have the central nervous system, which is composed of brain and spinal cord. Well, the peripheral nervous system composed of nerves and ganglia. Now, the nerves run between the central nervous system and other tissues, where your ganglion cells or ganglia, they are your relay stations. Or uh, they are found in the different parts of the body, and then they will send signal through the peripheral nervous system para, mak para makaabot sa central nervous system. Okay? Okay. I think those are the four fundamental types of tissue and we're down with our last objective for the session, tissue repair and aging. Just like the cell, no, if a group of cells undergoes repair and aging, we call it the tissue repair and aging. Um, each tissue has a different capacity for repair. 
no? Epidural cells, the one that we've talked about, they have a continuous capacity for repair since one of the function of the epithelial cells, they are found in the underlying surfaces. They are prone for trauma. They are prone for damage. So this epithelial cell characteristic, they have this continuous capacity for repair. Some connective tissues such as bone, they, they repair easily. No, well, the con other connective tissues such as our cartilage, they repair less readily or less ang repair nila. Why? Because between bones and cartilages, bones kasi they are vascular, meaning they are supplied by blood. But the cartilage, they, they don't have um, vascular supply, meaning they just receive nutrition from its tissue per se, not from the blood. Okay? Muscular tissue, they have poor capacity for repair, especially if there are if the damage is severe. Okay, mezo mahirap ang kamag repair niyan. The nervous tissue has the worst capacity for repair of damaged cells. Uh, yes, that's true. No, if there is a damaged nerve cells, usually the function of that new of that person or or, or, or of that patient will you will see. Uh, signs and symptoms or its function will lo really lose dramatically. So, yan ang pinaka uh, pangit na magkaroon ng damage sa nervous tissue because as you can see, they have the worst capacity for repair of damage cells. Okay. Uh, when we define tissue repair, it is the process that replaces worn out or damaged or dead cells. The new cells will originate by cell division as mentioned kanina sa cell uh, cell subject, uh, if the parenchymal cells or ibig sabihin ng parenchyma, if the characteristic cells accomplish the repair, the tissue regeneration is possible. And a near perfect reconstruction of the injured tissue may occur. Doc, pwede bang if ever may na-injured ang cell or tissue, 100% pa siya repair? The answer is no. Okay? Near perfect reconstruction. But that actually depends number one sa age. Uh, process of healing, anong mga nutritional build-up ang binibigay natin sa, sa taon may injured or wounded. Uh, it's mechanism of repair. No? Kung if, if that person or if, or if that patient's uh, coping mechanism or, or its mechanism of repair to the wound or to the injured area is good, why not? Okay? Right? Also, a factor is if that patient has medical conditions such as diabetes. No, diabetes per se, diabetic patients, as we all know, um, yung repair nila sa wood is actually very poor no, because of the uncontrolled sugar sa, sa blood nila. Okay? Now, however, if fibroblasts need to come in to repair the tissue, they synthesize materials that aggregate to form a scar tissue. And this is what we call the process of fibrosis. Um, if you will be encountering um, X-ray film na may fibrotic tissue, no, kaya, uh, fibrosis, that means nagkaroon ka ng tuberculosis at naging scar tissue na siya. Okay? Doc, kapag scar tissue na makita sa, sa, sa lungs, you, do you have an active tuberculosis? There's, uh, the answer is no. If a uh, pulmonologist or radiologist found out that they that you have a fibrotic uh, fibrosis, any signs of fibrosis in your lungs, that means you uh, tissue repair is done. Okay? Meaning, uh, they are not active anymore. Okay? Now, aging and tissues, as mentioned, Tissues heal faster and leave less obviously, less obvious scars in the young than in the aged. Okay, the extracellular components of that tissue, such as collagen and elastic fibers, also change with age. That's why one factor in tissue repair, wound healing, is age. Okay, mas mabilis magheal sa mga bata compared to the uh, elderly population. All right. So uh, that would be the end of the week one session. Thank you very much for listening.